What do you really know about how the Dutton family came to be? What guest stars are actually doing their real life job on the show? Ever think Gator might actually be doing the cooking off screen? Yellowstone fans have Taylor Sheridan to thank for bringing the series to life. Sheridan is the one who first began setting the groundwork for what would become Yellowstone way back in 2013. If his name is ringing a bell, it's probably because he's one of Hollywood's biggest up-and-coming behind-the-scenes talents. After a short career as an actor that saw him taking on a small part on Veronica Mars, and a recurring role as Deputy Chief of Police David Hale on Sons of Anarchy, Sheridan decided to move behind the camera. In fact, it was his weariness of acting that turned him to screenwriting in the first place, thus motivating him to create Yellowstone. Sheridan is best known for his first two efforts as a screenwriter. 2015 Sicario, a visceral tale of an FBI agent's descent into the world of Mexico's cartel wars, was met with widespread acclaim. His follow-up, the modern western Hell or High Water, nabbed him an Oscar nomination for Best Original Screenplay. He also wrote and directed the 2017 film Wind River before successfully pitching his idea for Yellowstone. The impetus for Yellowstone came from a desire to tell a story about gentrification in the American West. In an interview with Deadline, Sheridan explained, It is the most American of us the West, and land developers sell that fantasy, and people who can afford the fantasy are very, very wealthy people from LA to New York, Dallas, and Florida. In the process, those land values and inheritance taxes are killing a way of life. One of the most significant factors that draws viewers to Yellowstone is its star, Oscar Award winner Kevin Costner. It's the multi-talented actor's first time starring on a TV series, besides the limited miniseries Hatfields and McCoys. Sheridan viewed Costner's involvement as an integral part of setting the show's tone and style. He told Variety in June 2018, Kevin's one of the biggest movie stars of the past 40 years, and well-deserved. He's an incredible storyteller as a director, as a writer, as an actor. And so when you have that kind of tool in your toolbox, you can write him into some really conflicting situations. You know, having a conversation with you is like a, is, is, is like a Martian talking to a fungo. As it turns out, there's a reason Costner has been slow to make the leap to TV. He told Indie Wire in 2019 that he's had difficulty feeling comfortable creating a character without knowing what their full arc was. He described the process as a more vulnerable way to go through life as an actor, even going so far as to say, It hasn't been an easy adjustment for me. I don't like it too much. Despite his misgivings about working in television, Costner has been effusive in his praise for Sheridan. In an interview with Collider, the actor said of Sheridan's work ethic, He's had to pay a lot of dues and a lot of things. He's cleaned out a lot of horse stalls in Hollywood, so to speak. As with any massive TV production, things haven't always gone smoothly behind the scenes of Yellowstone. According to Deadline, the show hit its first roadblock before its pilot had even aired, and only months after Paramount Network had greenlit the production. For the first season of Yellowstone, Paramount Network partnered with the Weinstein Company, who agreed to produce the series. However, in October 2017, the New York Times and The New Yorker published reports of the Weinstein Company co-founder Harvey Weinstein's history of sexual harassment and abuse. Swift action was then taken to distance Weinstein from Yellowstone. They released a statement declaring that Weinstein's name would be removed from the credits for both Yellowstone and another co-produced show for the network titled Waco. The president of Paramount Network, Kevin Kay, also stood firm in their decision during a press tour. As reported by Deadline, the exec explained, There are hundreds of people who worked on both Waco and Yellowstone, and these people shouldn't be penalized. That has nothing to do with them, and we want a safe workplace. Nobody wants to be associated with the things that went on there. When pressed about Weinstein's involvement on Yellowstone and Waco, Kay added, I want to say definitively that Harvey Weinstein has never been a part of the creative process. Until a new name of the company is announced, Weinstein Company will not be listed in the credits for either show. The primary dramatic focus of Yellowstone is on the White Dutton family. However, their proximity to the fictional Broken Rock Indian Reservation and ongoing feud with tribe chairman Thomas Rainwater means that Native American characters are featured prominently on the show as well. Controversy erupted over the casting of actress Kelsey Asbill in the role of Monica Long Dutton, a Native American woman and the wife of one of the Dutton sons. Asbill had previously claimed to be of Chinese and Cherokee descent. Shun Magazine described her in a July 2018 profile as part Cherokee and half Chinese, presumably because that's what she said during the interview. A November 2018 profile of Asbill and W Magazine also described her as being of Chinese, English, and Cherokee descent. She told the publication, It's been a blessing to get to explore native culture on Yellowstone. As a person of mixed race, as you get older, it matters more to you who you are and where you come from. So to be able to get in touch with that side of my heritage has been amazing. However, according to native news source Penchaga.net, Asbel's assertions might not be as accurate as she would have us believe. When her claims were presented to the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians, the tribe Asbel claimed her lineage descended from, they responded with a statement declaring, No documentation was found on our records to support any claim that she descends from the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. Outside of the casting controversy, several Native American people involved in the show's production have spoken highly of their experiences. 
Veteran actor Gil Birmingham told Indian Country Today that he was thrilled to be on the show, saying, One of the highlights is to have a prominent Native American character in a contemporary piece that's empowered and not playing a victimization portrayal. He's also praised Sheridan's handling of Native issues, but clarified by adding, It would be nice if we could get some more Native writers included, but getting work for as many people as we can is a good start. Our first fight is against being ignored. AJ Not Afraid, chairman of the Crow Nation, whose reservation stands in for the fictional Broken Rock Reservation, also praised the portrayal of contemporary Native Americans in Yellowstone. He told Variety that when it came to the representation of Native American characters, Yellowstone is a lot more realistic than other shows. In 2018, animal rights advocacy group PETA claimed that a whistleblower who worked on the set of Yellowstone informed them that the show used actual dead bovines in a scene that depicted mutilated cow carcasses. They characterized this as both wasteful and having the potential to expose the cast and crew to disease. Furthermore, the whistleblower noted that the carcasses were left out in the sun for a long period of time during filming and produced a stench that was difficult for the crew to later wash away. Paramount Network denied this claim shortly after it became public. The company's SVP of Communications, Kurt Paddett, said in a statement, Paramount Network takes animal safety very seriously and with the utmost professionalism. The production has taken necessary precautions to provide for animal safety and their well-being on set. All animals are monitored on set by professional handlers. We have been in touch with PETA, which presented us with inaccurate claims that we were able to correct, including no cows were killed or mutilated for the scene in question. Thankfully, this is the only claim of animal cruelty that Yellowstone has faced. Just because Yellowstone centers on family and political conflict doesn't mean that filming hasn't gotten intense. Speaking with Parade Magazine, actress Kelly Riley, who plays the smart and scary Beth Dutton, described a particularly harrowing day on set. She explained that she had to film a scene where her character runs toward a pack of wolves during a very unorthodox date. The scene involved Beth yelling at said pack of wolves as they attempted to feed, which only intensified her worries about everything going south. Riley said, They were real wolves. They were tame, but they were still real wolves. They had like invisible fishing line on them with two people lying in the grass, so if they had charged me, I kept saying to them, You're really think that that's going to stop them? And they were like, well, we can't do anything else. In another incident, Riley described how she almost fell victim to a bad Google Maps recommendation during a break from filming. While attempting a day trip, the British actress took a shortcut and found herself on a precarious Montana mountain road in the middle of December in an ill-equipped car. She told Parade that her first reaction when returning to level ground was of shock and gratitude, saying, I can't believe I survived. Following the finale of Yellowstone Season 3, an interviewer for Deadline asked Taylor Sheridan how members of his cast took to horseback riding. After all, Sheridan himself appears skillful on horseback during his cameo appearances on the show. He revealed that Beth Dutton actor Kelly Riley is the most experienced rider. The viewers might not know this given that, of the main players, her character spends the least amount of time on a horse. Jimmy Herdstrom actor Jeffrey White, meanwhile, had to learn how to ride a horse more or less from scratch. Sheridan said, We had him out there two or three days in a row. Horseback riding is all about trust between horse and rider. It takes a lot of trust for someone who has never been on a horse to get on one, and the horse can feel that fear, so it was pretty dicey for a bit. To his credit, the second day I had him out there just riding, never complaining. And when he got off, he said, I'll fix this, I promise. Don't worry, Jimmy. It will all be over soon. Some of the ranchers featured on Yellowstone, meanwhile, are professionals in their real lives. A video shared by Paramount Network to its YouTube channel details how real-life cowboy Jake Ream started working behind the scenes of Yellowstone before he was offered an on-camera role. His character, who was simply named Jake, allowed him to finally show off his wrangling skills on TV. Dedicated viewers of Yellowstone know that the Dutton family employs a cook named Gator. Perhaps most famously, Gator makes Beth a smoothie consisting of three scoops of ice cream and three shots of vodka per her specifications. As it turns out, Gator is portrayed by a man actually nicknamed Gator, with the birth name of Gabriel Gilbo. In addition to bringing his real-life nickname to the character, Gilbo is likewise an experienced chef who is responsible for many of the meals served to the Yellowstone cast and crew. In a profile of the man Paramount Network shared to its YouTube channel, Jimmy Herdstrom actor Jefferson White claimed, Anybody on the crew, anybody in the cast, can't talk about this show for five minutes without mentioning Gator. Actor Ian Bowen described Gilbo's presence on set as essentially a restaurant open from crew call to rap where you can have whatever you want. Though Gilbo was born near Santa Barbara, California, he grew up in Louisiana, which influenced his style of cooking. On his personal Instagram account, Gilbo often shows off some of the meals he cooks during the filming of Yellowstone, like, for example, a pair of whole pigs he served to its cast and crew. He also recently headed craft services for the FX on Hulu comedy Reservation Dogs. He posted a few different meals he cooked up for them during the making of that series, too. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.